Hey everyone, welcome to this lesson in the Women's 2015 for Employers five part video series. Super happy that you've decided to stick with it and get up to speed on the new Women's 2015 requirements. In this lesson, we're covering hazard classification and pictograms. Let's get right into it. By the end of this lesson, you'll have a better understanding of Women's 2015 hazard groups, hazard classes, hazard categories, and of course, the new Women's 2015 pictograms. So in lesson two, we learned that Canada's adoption of GHS into WMIS resulted in requirements that are ultimately improving labels. The new labels are required to display several bits of information that give users details about the hazards that are associated with the product. So how are hazards classified anyways? Well, in WMIS 1988, there are six hazard classes. And if you're at all familiar with WMIS, you know that they're represented by eight symbols. Eight because one of the hazard classes has three subclassifications. Sometimes workers were confused by this and actually thought that there were eight classes. WMIS 2015 is a bit different in a few ways. First, hazards are broken down into two groups called hazard groups. Then within each group, there are several hazard classes and within each class, there's at least one hazard category. And finally, rather than having symbols that are displayed with a black circle, we have what are referred to as pictograms that are basically an image with a red diamond. Let's break it down and look at these changes just a bit closer. Women's 2015 applies to major hazard groups, physical and health. Each of the two hazard groups has hazard classes that are characterized by specific hazardous properties. The hazardous products in the physical hazards group have been classified according to their physical or chemical properties, such as reactivity, flammability, compressed gases, or corrosiveness on metals. In the health hazards group, products are classified based on their ability to cause adverse health effects such as acute toxicity, respiratory sensitization such as breathing difficulties, asthma, or allergies, eye irritation, or carcinogenicity, basically the ability to cause cancer. While an environmental hazards group exists in the GHS, it's not been adopted in Women's 2015. However, Women's 2015 allows manufacturers, suppliers, and employers to include environmental hazards in their labels and safety data sheets whenever possible. Hazard classes are a way of grouping hazardous products together based on their properties. Products with similar properties are grouped in the same classes. Most hazard classes in Women's 2015 are common to the GHS classes and are used worldwide by all other countries that have adopted GHS, but some are specific to Women's 2015. All the physical hazards that were covered in the Control Products Regulation in which formed part of Women's 1988 have been addressed by GHS physical hazard classes, except that the GHS has subdivided the hazards differently. Likewise, all the GHS physical hazard classes have been adopted in Canada by the HPR, except the explosive hazards class. Also, new physical hazard classes such as simple asphyxiants, pyrophoric gases, combustible dusts, and physical hazards not otherwise classified have been included in Women's 2015 to further increase worker safety and health. We're not going to go through all the physical hazard classes in this lesson, but you can definitely check them out by clicking the resources link in the lesson description above. While Women's 2015 health hazard classes subdivide hazards in a way that's different from the original Women's, all the classes addressed almost all of the health hazards that were covered in Women's 1988 and include some additional types of hazards. The additional hazard classes have been included to further improve worker safety and health. Women's 2015 health hazard classes include all the GHS health hazard classes along with the biohazardous infectious materials class, which is actually not part of GHS. This one was actually part of Women's 1988. In addition to that, there's a new class called health hazards not otherwise classified. In Women's 2015 hazard classification, every hazard class has at least a single category. 
sometimes referred to as a type. In a few cases, subcategories are also specified. Subcategories are identified with a number and a letter. The category tells you about how hazardous the product is, or in other terms, the hazard severity. Category 1 is always the greatest level of hazard within its class. If Category 1 is further divided, Category 1A within the same hazard class is a greater hazard than Category 1B. There are a few exceptions to this rule. For example, for the gases under pressure hazard class, the hazard categories are compressed gas, liquefied gas, refrigerated liquefied gas, and dissolved gas. These classes relate to the physical state of the gas when packaged and don't describe the degree of hazard. WIMIS 2015 pictograms are simple graphic images that vividly highlight the types of hazards present in various hazardous products. The standardized pictograms act as a visual, easy to understand tool for helping workers to immediately identify the types of hazards present in certain products. A quick glance at a pictogram will alert a user of potential dangers and compel him or her to take the necessary precautions. Except for the biohazardous infectious materials pictogram, all the WIMIS 2015 pictograms are made of a distinctive red diamond border and have the symbol representing the hazard associated with the product inside that border. Together, the border and the symbol are called a pictogram and are assigned to a specific hazard category or class. So there are definitely similarities, but also differences between WIMIS 1988 symbols and WIMIS 2015 pictograms. While the 1988 symbols were denoted with symbols inside black circled borders, the WIMIS pictograms of today are denoted by symbols inside red diamond shaped borders. Some of WIMIS 1988 symbols, such as the exclamation T that stood for other toxic effects and the R for dangerously reactive have been fully replaced and are non-existent in the new system. The red borders of WIMIS 2015 pictograms make the black symbols inside the borders more prominent and visible to all users of the products uh, than the black borders and black symbols that are used in WIMIS 1988. So there's definitely an improvement visually here. New images such as the exploding bomb, health hazard, and exclamation mark have made the new pictograms much more specific and definitely more useful. And WIMIS 2015 pictograms are universally accepted while WIMIS 1988 are not. We're just about out of time for today, so let's wrap things up. Pictograms enhance the communication of hazards associated with chemicals, ensuring that users recognize the hazards and take the necessary precautions before they begin handling the products. As a result, the standardized pictograms reduce the risk of potential workplace injuries, illness, or accidental exposure to hazardous chemicals. If you want to learn more about pictograms and the hazards that they represent, click on the resource link above and you'll be taken to a comprehensive resource that contains a lot more information. I'll see you in the next lesson where we'll be covering safety data sheets. As always, have fun, live safe.